So welcome to this week's Business Spotlight interview. This week I'm joined by Mike Mulvihull, who's the founder and owner of E Aspire, based in Lancashire in the northwest in Preston. Welcome, Mike. Hello, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you too. Thank you for joining us today. As you know, these Business Spotlight interviews are designed with two purposes. Firstly, to promote you and your business, a local business to our national audience, and secondly, to educate and inspire our audience about the things that you do so they can get some hints and tips to help them develop their businesses further. I thought we'd start off this week just by asking you, Mike, uh, what is it that E Aspire do? And if you can tell us a little bit about your journey on how you started off and, and how you've got to where you are now with the business. Yeah, no, um, my background's film and television. So I've been over 40 odd years in the industry working for major networks and also a lot of blue chip companies but also got involved with a few things like pop with the uh, help um, what Stuart and people like that. So a very mixed background. Uh, in terms of where I am today, a few years back, I worked with John Cleese and Video Arts and saw the opportunity for online training, training videos. So I had set up a content development company, which is a digital media company. And we produce basically e-learning courses and training videos. Um, but there's a key uh, factor in all this, and that is that um, people who need to learn and want to learn um, want to be engaged. And a lot of the content that um, we came across in the past was very, very predictable, wasn't really engaging, and in some cases was a bit of a switch off. So we brought drama into training. So we use actors and people like that to uh, create uh, training scenarios. And uh, it's been highly, highly successful for us. Uh, we're working for leading blue chip companies and we're also a partner to SIGOS, the largest training provider in Europe. And we produce all the localization training videos for the American actors in the UK, which are then sent across the USA. And they have been enormously successful. Brilliant. <clears throat> I know from personal experience, talking to some of our clients who've been through various e-learning programs, they find it very difficult to stay engaged with those programs and to actually finish off because you know there'll be lots of videos lots of other learning materials to do but they, they sort of lose heart halfway through it quite often so producing something that's got that real engagement uh, must be a real bonus for the clients that you work with it is because if you don't grab people in the first few seconds it's like watching a tv commercial you know people you, you have to get people's attention very quickly the message has to be succinct so it's all about learning, but taking it down into bite-sized chunks, into micro-learning. So the dynamics are people can pick up and put down that suits their lifestyle, suits their learning sort of um, the way they want to learn, et cetera. And uh, I think the other thing is at the end of the day, it's pointless doing this unless you can show that it's working. So there has to be value add from the actual learning that you're, you know, that you're producing for your employees. And the other aspect is employees will stay with the business if they get the right adequate training um, from the employer to actually increase their, you know, continual personal development. So there's, there's things there that are definite hooks, but if the content doesn't actually attract them, engage them, anything else, then they'll do it because they have to do it. But have they learned anything? That's questionable. Mm. And am I right in saying that you've also got a learning management system that you can give to other companies as well in terms of building their own um, learning platforms? Yeah. So my passion uh, as an SME has always been to help other SMEs be able to grow their business and develop. Um, the COVID really sort of did have an impact in terms of remote working, hybrid working. Um, and also for a lot of small businesses who now <clears throat> need to get people trained, but the, the, most of the products out there, and there's thousands of them and everything else, are all geared to the enterprise end of the market. So we looked at the end of the, the bottom end of the market, not putting it in a derogative way, but you know, employers with maybe 50 employees or less, right down to a few, who really want to be able to provide training online to keep their staff. They can't because A, platforms are too expensive, B, you're paying for redundant software, and C, the content normally is stuck to the platform, so you don't have a choice. So what we've done is say, let's make this dead easy, let's make it dead simple, let's make it dead inexpensive for people to get online 
So we teamed up with lead and training providers. We've aggregated their content. You can go onto channel to learning, uh, you know, and literally put down, I've got eight employees, I need five courses, press a button, bang, and the site will be live and launched within minutes of you doing that branded to your own business. And the beauty of that is that each business itself knows that the employees are only doing the training that they have got on their actual learning platform. So they're not going off and doing other things which are relevant to the business, cost the business money, and equally, they can't really prove they've done it because they don't, you know, apart from the business that have done it, there's no online tracking. Mm. So that's what we provide. It's a, it's a single source solution. Yeah, so it's a it's a branded platform that people can use, and there's a smorgasbord of different courses on there that the employers can pick from that their their employees can get access to. It sounds like a brilliant idea for SMEs because, as you say, most of the learning management systems out there are designed with enterprise in mind, aren't they? That's brilliant. Can you tell us a little bit about the company itself? How many employees you've got? Uh, where you're based, and 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 what your aspirations are really for the next few years? So the company is made up of a team of six people. Um, and we then supplement the actual team with additional contract workers as one required. So there's myself as the founder, and then I've got Matt Duncan, who is my chief operating officer. So he's helped manage the architecture and development of the software. Um, and then Janine Tier, who is my creative director. So she works very closely with me on the content production side and development side. We've got Joe. Uh, Porter, who is our project manager. So he's, he's the guy that keeps an eye on everybody to make sure it's all going as you should do. Uh, we've got Elliot, who's our learning developer. He's the one that builds the courses, the online courses, once he's got all the assets. And then we have Mo, who's our animator stroke uh, video editor. So it's a very small, compact, highly experienced team. And then all we need to do is add uh, additional source where we need it. So that keeps the financial model of the business fairly fluid. Um, it means that we're only um, incurring costs when we need to, and that's normally through growth. Um, aspirations of the future, well, the content business itself will continue to grow. Uh, we're already up on last year by about 56% on turnover in the first quarter. Um, and we potentially could double this year. So I think we're on, we're on target for that. In terms of the platform, um, we've got high aspirations for the platform, but what we're doing is looking at the platform as a separate business, um, as a separate business, and the idea being that within the next five years, we will be attacking the SME market, and our target is to sign up around about twenty to 30,000 businesses at about 1.4 million potential, and if we get that and we've got them on annual subscriptions, then we're talking about a very successful business. Um, it's annual recurring revenue year on year. And because the ed entry price is open to everybody, so anybody on the planet really can afford it, um, what we're hoping to do is encourage these smaller businesses who will grow is to become part of our incubator in the UK. And that will enable them to scale the business as a SaaS model. And then at some point, three years time we'll be looking at an exit um you know and that potentially could come from one of our partners or trade acquisition mm. Mm. sounds like you've got a, a a path well planned out there already uh Mike. Yeah. yeah you have to i think you, the important thing is is that the path the, the is planned out but you've got a team and the key to this is making sure that the team shares in the success in the building of the business so when it does come to a point of, you know, longevity or sustainability and all that, they're all part and parcel of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, at some point I will exit. The business is not about me. It's about the team. It's about everybody that sees the potential of the business and how we can grow it. Absolutely. Um, it, it, it's fair to say that you cannot build a, a, a business asset um, that's got a, a great resale value unless you've got a team underneath you that can grow the business because if you are going to exit the business, you've got to have a team of people who can carry on and run the business with yes. whoever, whoever invests in that business. Absolutely. What's your background, Mike? Uh, I know you're in, you've been in the film and television industry for a long, long while. Have you got other experience as a business owner or was eAspire your first? No, I've, I've, I've had experiences. I've been involved in various projects and um, back in um, 86 when Cable UK was getting underway, 
Um, I was working with uh, Sir John Davy, Lord Blaker, Viscount Goff, Weinstock, etc., GEC, BICC, uh, with Cable UK. So I learned quite a lot there and helped write the white paper for the UK on uh, cable TV. I ducked out of that when I realised it was 14 years behind the desk, <coughs> pushing numbers. That's not me. I'm a creative person. Um, so I, I came out of that. Since then, I've sort of worked uh, for various organisations as a, you know, as a team leader, as a thought leader, uh, as a consultant. Um, it's more for me about listening to what people need, what they need to achieve, what their plans are. And I tend to try and take a, a view that where do you want to be in three years' time? There, fine. Now let's step this back quarter by quarter or period by period, see what the steps uh, are needed to actually help get you there. So we don't sell, we're, we're, we're partners, we're proactive partners, we're consultants, and we listen to what people's problems are and we set about solving them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a great book by Stephen Covey called Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And one of the habits in there is to start with the end in mind. Um, and that's really important. If you don't know where you're going, how on earth are you ever going to get there? And getting the team on board and all pointing in the same direction is yeah. absolutely vitally important, of course. Yeah. And for them to be able to share in your success. What would you say is your biggest learning as a business owner then, Mike? Um, I think the biggest learning is being aware of all the dynamics in a small business. Um, you know, many times, you know, founders can be sort of a little bit protective, insular, you know, it's everything is all about them. I think what uh, I've learned is that you learn from other people and you learn from them rapidly. So when it comes to accounts, I built the original financial model. I trained in my very early days as an article clerk and I brought that back into play. Um, you know, it's all about managing day-to-day -day cash flow, uh, making sure that you've got funds that you need to expand to grow uh, as and when they're required. It's all about, um, you know, managing people, but being not afraid to give them their head, let them go ahead, let them try things. Um, if they make mistakes, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because we all learn from that. I've learned from many of those. Um, and I think the, the other thing is being able to understand uh, your customers, type of customers, what they are, um, and being able to sort of uh, interface with them in a way that um, they appreciate that you're not just there to take the cash, you're there to actually help them achieve something. Yeah, and yeah. that that requires you know managing people, requires managing financials, it re requires managing growth, projections, business planning, business strategy, um, and basically not getting too, I suppose, embroiled in detail because that will come out as the the whole thing sort of starts to come together. And what in in terms of the present day, what what do you see as the biggest challenge for you as a as a business owner currently? Um, I think it's all about focus. Uh, it's all about focus and growth. Uh, the challenge for us will be uh, we're going into uh, a market, a new a new area with the platform. Um, you know, with the current economic situation, uh, you know, there's there's not that much money flying around. People are being very tight on, on budgets and what have you. So it's how we actually engage with those businesses to, you know, give them the opportunity to do what we're offering, which is online training, um, at a price that comes within their scope. Now, you know, the SMEs to me are the lifeblood of the UK economy. The government's also talked about providing SMEs with you know, up to 5,000 funding for getting digitally literate and so on. So we want to join in that. Uh, we want to be part of that. Um, but challenges with setting up a new business, a new venture, is always about, you know, traction, uh, route to market and uh, those are the challenges and I suppose at the end of the day being uh, very critical about your business plan and not chase rainbows because you know sometimes you get a hold of an idea and, and it, you know you, you can't let go of it but you've got to be prepared to look at it and say is that working and if it's not you've got to change tactics and you've got to do it quickly absolutely um Obviously, you've talked about the, the team that you've got there um, and in, it, important for the growth of a company is the growth of the team, obviously, as you said. 
Um, how do you go about ensuring that your team grows um, and you provide the kind of learning and development um, for your team and your senior team that you're providing for other people through your uh, through the, the services that you provide? Um, basically, they have access to all courses that we offer our customers. And there's, there's, there's hundreds of them, as you can imagine. Um, equally, we, we do develop our own courses as well. Um, one of them we're currently working on is work and fatigue. Um, and that's all about edu educating people. You know, we've got mental awareness and all that sort of stuff going on as well. But I think it's, it's the realisation that, um, you know, if you're training other people, you need to make sure your own people are adequately trained because that's one of the biggest things that gets neglected. And equally, if, if you want your own team continuous, you know, continual personal development, the CPD and all that rest of it, um, you have to give them that opportunity. And I'll come back to what I said earlier on. 94% of employees in the UK said they would stay with their business if they're adequately trained. Mm. So we have to reflect that as well. And bear in mind that the, the, there's, in the target market we're looking at, 1.4 million SMEs, there's 13.5 million employees. That's a lot of people and a lot of learning. Yeah. Um, but equally, it's a lot of people and a lot of learning for us. Absolutely. Um, when you talk about your own inspirations and um, learning, are there any particular um, mentors or podcasts or books or videos or, or particular people in particular that you listen to or books that you've read that you'd recommend for other people in terms of business ownership and, and business in general? Yeah, I'd... I'd... I've seen lots of books about how to run a business and things like that, and, and they're, they're, they're there in multitude. I think I, I tend to be inspired by people that have done things that uh, where people have said, no, you can't do it. Um, so Richard Branson was down to his last few pence before, you know, he, he stuck to his guns and everything else, and eventually it turned. But it took a long time to get there, and it, it just needed that one little complete of luck. Um, I look at people like uh, Dyson who spent ages trying to get the business off the ground and funders and funding uh, because people said, well, we've got a Hoover, why do we need another one sort of thing? Well, yeah, but people said that about the iPhone because before the new iPhone came out, we all had the usual phones. Nobody thought about when the iPhone came out, sure it was out, it just went anal, it just went mad. Someone else thought outside the box. Yeah. Um, and that, to me, is where, you know, the sort of people I follow and look at is what are they doing that's different? Yeah. What, what's, what's it that's actually that's capturing people's imagination? Um, and therefore, what are we are going to do that's different is yeah. actually going to have the same impact? Yeah. And accepting the fact that it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. You know, um, I've kissed quite a few frogs to get to where we are today. <laughs> um, and no doubt I'm going to kiss a lot more. But um, you've got to be realistic. Uh, and you've got to be prepared to take the rough with the smooth. Absolutely. And all those people, you know, uh, have been, you know, in one way, shape or form, have been through it. They were all enormously successful. But I think in, in some respects, a lot of people say, well, that's luck. No, you make luck. Absolutely. Um, just one final question for you. I can't believe that time has flown by so quickly. Uh, it's been really interesting talking to you. Um, do you have any advice for your 18-year-old self? If you were able to give yourself one piece of advice? If I was going to give one piece of advice, yeah, probably stop talking so much. <laughs> I, I'm a people's person and as a director, work with actors and crews and things. And to me, it was all about people communicating with people. But I do get a bit carried away. And sometimes I can, I can actually write three paragraphs or one sentence will do. So that's, that's how I can improve enormously. Brilliant. Um, how do people get in touch with you, Mike? Um, you've got a website, obviously, and how do they learn more about the um, services you provide and the platform that you've got there for them? Yeah, they go on to easpire.online. Uh, um, and then in, in, in the website, there's a bit about the platform. So it's a short video, but we haven't gone into too much detail because we're, what we're trying to do is not overcomplicate or confuse people with the content business. The platform is something we developed to actually add and grow, but uh, it's separate. So 
Um, and that's our skill set. They can go onto the website or contact me. Uh, my mobile number is 077 33 um, I always take calls um, because I think it's grossly impolite not to at least answer people. Um, and I, I'm quite used to sending out emails and, you know, people just don't bother to answer them. And you think, well, okay, fair enough. Uh, and I think people kind of, you know, get switched off to that sometimes. But no, I'm, I'm open to chat as always. Brilliant. Mike, we'll make sure that all of those details are included in our show notes for this particular interview. Uh, I just want to say thank you. It's been a real pleasure talking to you and to find out more about eAspire um, and the potential um, opportunities for our clients with the learning management system as well. Uh, I'm sure there'll be opportunities for the people who watch this video to get in touch with you. So I'm looking forward to hearing from them and hearing more from you. Mike, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Take care.